I'd like to show you some of the light sources that we are using nowadays in microscopy. And the very first light source that we don't use anymore on modern microscopes is right outside. The sun has been used for many centuries to illuminate, illuminate our specimens, often using a little mirror that then directs the sunlight onto the specimen. So that used to be the brightest light source we could find. Um, nowadays we're more inside and we're using devices like those standing here. So first of all, here on the left I have a halogen lamp. The lamp itself is sitting in a lamp house. It is a, a halogen lamp very much like what you use at home. We can put a voltage on this. We'll then uh, illuminate the, 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 the spiral here will start glowing and that light will then through a condenser lens be transmitted into our microscope. So some of the halogen lamp houses have a little mirror sitting here on the back to get more light coming out of the front. Often that's not needed, so this lamp house here is uh, just completely black inside and all you get out is the light coming out of the front. Since we have a condenser lens here in front of that filament, that lens will make a magnified image of the filament and I project it here on the whiteboard. And so that uh, image of the filament, it's the image of our light source, is something that you will also encounter in various positions throughout the microscope. Now halogen lamps are nice for transmitted light illumination. They have two disadvantages. One is that as you see, it takes quite a bit of time for that light to come on. It doesn't switch on momentarily and the other thing is that it doesn't get super bright and for things like fluorescence we really want brighter light sources. So uh, a light source that has been used for many many years in fluorescence microscopy is this mercury arc lamp. This is the bulb and in this bulb there is um, an anode and a cathode and uh, a very high voltage is being put over this such that it forms an arc. Just the same thing like when you're welding, which of course everyone does in their spare time. Uh, this, and this arc is super, super bright. That arc is then uh, projected so the light goes in every direction through, through a condenser lens. It reaches our microscope. Also inside this lamp house there's often a mirror, a parabolic mirror and that ref uh, reflects the light going into the back direction so that it comes out in the front and you get more light coming out. So this mercury, this is a mercury arc lamp. Um, we don't like them that much anymore and that is because you have to replace them after about 200 hours. Also when these things break they're a big hazard. Immediately evacuate the room if that happens. Uh, and they're kind of a pain to align. You have to set them up so that this arc is positioned in the right place uh, with respect to the condenser lens so that the light goes exactly through the optical path of the microscope. Therefore, little boxes like this one here have become more and more popular. Here we have um, a so-called metal halide illuminator. It's also uh, a lamp. And that thing just clicks in here, there's no alignment that needs to be done. The light is then delivered through this thing here, which is a liquid light guide. So it's a, um, a, a, a tube that is filled with a liquid, something like water, and the light is coupled in on this end and then makes it all the way uh, to the end. So when I now assemble this and fire it up here, makes a lot of noise, takes some time. So one thing uh, about these lamps is that they don't like to be switched on and off very often. So you know once they're on, leave them uh, on for at least an hour or so. So when I now press the shutter so that it opens, you see the light coming out of this liquid light guide, it, uh, the lamp needs to warm up a bit and it will become brighter and brighter over time. 
light source that is more and more replacing both those halogen lamps and things like this is an uh, LED. And here I have one of these light emitting diodes. So these things are really nice because you switch them on very, very rapidly. Uh, there's no uh, fans, much less heat production. And nowadays they can uh, become very, very bright as well. So then often when you couple this into the microscope, you will put a, a condenser lens in front of it and you get an assembly, something like this. And we have like nice a light of the wavelength that we're interested in coming out of them. So these LEDs have defined colors, but you can get multiples of them and combine them and then electronically select which wavelength you would like to use. And lastly, um, in quite a, a few types of microscopy, such as confocal and turf, we use lasers. Lasers can look like this one here. So this is a uh, solid state laser. So as you know, a laser is really a narrow beam of light coming out. And um, I'll switch this one on. So again, this takes a little bit of time to uh, warm up. Lasers, since they produce this very narrow beam of light, uh, you have to really watch out with them. You don't want to get that beam of light hit your eyeball ever. This has a safety shutter here in the front. And so you can now see this very bright spot of green laser light coming out. Okay, that was the various types of light sources that we use uh, with microscopes.